I will introduce you now to the first tool and one of the most important ones that we will be using in this class and you will be using it if you are dealing with uh, computer forensics. It's a free tool. It comes from a company called Access Data and we call it the FTK Imager. FTK stands for Forensics Toolkit. It's a product of Access Data. So let's head on to the web and let's go to accessdata.com should be HTTP not HTTPS but that will take us there so under support here we're gonna go to uh, product downloads and you will notice there's a whole list of products that we can explore here but right now we are interested in the FTK Imager so if you click expand we have two versions of FTK Imager one is the normal version that you would install on your computer on your forensic machine and the other one is the light version the light version you can put it on a flash drive and you can run it from the flash drive there is no need to install it on a computer so each one of those have its own use if uh, the first one that you're installing in your forensics machine if you want to acquire data from a hard drive or a flash drive uh, then you attach the drive with a write blocker to your computer and you make the image with FTK Imager. Uh, if you are acquiring certain files or even the whole drive from another computer and you don't want to install anything on it, obviously you don't want to change anything on a computer that you're investigating. So the FTK Imager Lite will come handy here and you can use it for that. So click on which one of those that you want to download. I already downloaded. You can download both. If you have a forensic machine, install it. And if you have a flash drive, also download the light version. As you see, I have it here already. It is actually a light version that I have. I will run FTK Imager. And this is the GUI interface of the Imager. What we will do here is we will try to acquire an image, a forensics image, of a flash drive. I have a small flash drive here that I will create an image of. I attach the flash drive to my computer, to our right blocker first, and the right blocker to my USB drive. We do that because we don't want to write to the drive that we are investigating anything so we have to use a write blocker. Once we did that, for the exercise by the way you don't need to use a write blocker right now you can just make an image of a small flash drive that you have. Then I'm gonna click on file and as you see we have multiple things here but what we are interested in right now is to create a disk image. So I'm clicking create disk image and what I have is a drive that is physical that's the flash drive that I just attached to my uh, computer so I'm gonna keep it here but you can also do a logical drive or contents of a folder for now we will do the physical drive so click on next after you made sure that physical drive is checked after we click next we have to select the drive that we want to make the image of and it says the source drive so this is the source for the image that we want to create an image for if you click on the drop down menu here in my case I have my own hard drive of the forensics machine and I have the other drive the uh, USB drive that I just attached so I am choosing that one and I'm gonna click finish so now we will uh, tell the computer where to put that image that we will create so the image destination we will add an image destination 
First, we will choose the image type. We have three kinds that we can choose from here. We have the raw image, the DD. It's basically using the Linux command, the DD, uh, data dump. Or smart, which is a Linux uh, distribution. Smart is uh, packed with uh, forensics tools. You can find more about smart in uh, asrdata.com. This is their website here, asrdata.com, and uh, you can read about the smart Linux that they have there. What we will use today is the E01, which is the format that is used by uh, Incase and it is becoming actually de facto the format for forensic images. So we will click next here. Here's the window where you can enter all the information of the case. So enter the information. In real life you enter the real correct and accurate information. Case number if you have case numbers. The evidence number if there is one. A unique description in my case flash drive examiner the name of the examiner and any notes that you have about this piece of evidence that you are making an image of and then you click next here we're gonna choose where is the destination of the image will be I will put it on the desktop for now just to make things easy, I will call it USB flash 1 and this is what I will name it. We have uh, compression here with FTK, it will compress the image. We'll talk about compression later in the, in the course. And the image format size in, uh, meg in megabytes. If you want to use uh, encryption you can. In our case here we will not. So I'm gonna click finish. We have here the verify image after they are created. We will talk about verification also later in the class. For now we just gave it the name and we said where the destination is and of course we gave what the source is and we will start right now to make the image, the forensic image. In this case what we're doing to redefine what is a forensic image we are making an exact image, a bit by bit image of the drive that I am doing right here. We're making an image of the whole drive, of the whole uh, piece of evidence that we have. As you see here, this was a quick. After it finishes, it will give you the MD5 hash and it will give you the SHA-1 hash. This is important information to verify the image after that. We don't have any bad sectors which is good. The name and and the sector count that we have. How many sectors we have on this drive. So I'm gonna hit close now that it's ready. Close, close and let's see what happened here. I'm gonna minimize this. This is the image here. The, we call it USB flash 1. I disconnect the drive that I was making the image from. You heard the sound of the disconnect. Along with the image itself that was created, we have also a report, the same report that you saw before with the uh, hash numbers is also saved into a text file. I'll open it here with notepad, let's say and this is here what you're looking at is information about the image itself it was created with what what version of ftk imager the information about the case that i entered and then the most important is the md5 checksum and the sha1 checksum those that were created with the image itself then a verification was done another hash was ran on it and it gave, as you see, the same number. This is 
look at the hash of the MD5 it is equal to this one here so that concludes the creating of the forensic image that I wanted to create and this is the major use of FTK imager however I want very briefly to show you another use or maybe another two uses that we have with FTK imager so this part from here on is uh, separate you can use FTK imager to view an image that you have not only to create an image but also to view an image so let's try to do that I will open FTK imager again and before we went to the file and we said create a disk image now I will use it for something different I will look at an image that was created previously so I'm gonna add an evidence item this evidence item is an image file so I will check image file and click next and then I will browse to where my images are in my case I have a folder here of some images let's choose let's take this one open it say finish and this is what I see from the image you can expand here the USB image itself under the root you see all the files that are existing that were not deleted they were not marked to be overwritten by the operating system all of these files are existing you can see some for example here an image let's see what image kind of image is that I'm gonna expand this bottom file and I see that it's some kind of fruits image of a tray of fruits nice and some other images that I have I'm not gonna go over all of these right now we have a, a text file and some other images also we can look at the unallocated space and I have chunks of unallocated space here's for example an image that was deleted nice picture Here, apparently, um, a web page. Let's see what is this. We need to analyze what we're seeing here down here. We can see some of the text. Let's take another one and another one. So, basically, what I want to show you here is that you can use. FTK imager for initial look at an image that you created previously or if somebody's just given you an image and you want to see what does it contain we can look at that that was a second use of FTK imager of course you can do the same thing with full tool for analyzing like FTK itself or like in case or pro discover that you have the basic version of one additional use that you can use FTK for is for capturing memory I want to capture the memory from let's say this computer that I'm running right now so I clicked on capture memory I will enter the path where I do I want to put the result of this capture and basically what FTK do here for me is a memory dump and you can click on capture memory and it will start doing that in my case here I think I have 7 gigs not I think I'm sure I have 7 gigs and it will continue doing that I'm gonna cancel this because I don't need it I just wanted to show you that FTK can do that for you 
one more use of FTK is that you can obtain protected files out of the computer that you're running FTK on. Protected files mean registry files, uh, especially the SAM, which includes the passwords and uh, the system, the, the system key under the registry that you can look at. So that concludes our video about FTK Imager. Thank you.